Hello CS112. The reason I'm making this video is because over the past few weeks in labs and as well as private posts on Piazza, I got the feeling that not too many of you knew how to properly debug your code. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Python Visualizer to debug your code. It's going to be your best friend in this course. So Python Visualizer is just a casual Google search and you click on the first or second one uh, or even third, whichever one sort of has the pythontutor.com. It will take you to a um, page that looks like this, a place where you can start typing your code, but the real money maker is in the live programming mode. So you want to click on that and it will take you to a new page here. Today I'm going to be walking through uh, Lab 5's task, uh, multiplication some odd. So a lot of you guys uh, for this one and even Lab 6, the most recent lab, have been uh, saying you don't have enough time, stuff like that. Uh, this is really something uh, you guys are going to have to uh, get used to because this is how labs are going to be done. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff like this in your future CS courses, uh, so it's good to sort of get down how to think properly, like efficiently, and get the task done. So I sort of just paraphrased up here, you don't really need to read that, but pretty much, as you guys remember, you were given a list, and with each element of the list you want to uh, go through the range of the list start, uh, starting from 0 up to the elements value minus 1 so this would be 0 1 2 3 this would be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this would be from 0 to 10 now with those numbers we want to uh, add all of them together uh, the, the odd ones so here 0 1 2 3 you would get 1 plus 3 which happens to equal 4 and so on and so forth so the very first thing um, after fully understanding what the question is asking, of course, it's coming up <coughs> with an algorithm. Uh, so the very first thing you want to do, obviously, is loop through the list you are given, which is number list. So loop through list. So uh, the second thing you want to do is uh, find the range of each element. Uh, before we the uh, GTAs even like release this, uh, in each of your labs, they talked about the range function a lot. Hint, hint. Uh, you guys should be using that in this uh, specific one. And that would mean you would need a nested for loop, and the second for loop will be the range of elements. So, once you are in the range of an element, we're working with four here, it will give you 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, you don't need to specify this, uh, the start or the step because by default it starts at zero and steps by one, which is exactly what we're working with here. So, so the range. Once we find the range of the elements, zero, one, two, three, well, we want to check if if odd. We want to multiply it by a sum. We want to keep the sum, which means down below here. You want to uh, create a sum variable, and you cannot name it sum. I saw a lot of you guys doing this. This is a keyword in Python, so sum num is fine. So I, I'm just going to keep all the variables that I know we have to create down below our algorithm. That's typical. That's just what I did, just so it'd be easier for me to start cleaner uh, stuff like that. So if odd uh, plus equals sum num. Now, if it's even, you don't have to do anything. So that's nice and easy, you can skip that. Uh, but the last thing is that uh, once you get four sum, you need to store it somehow, and you need to multiply it by seven sum of all the odd uh, indices, and, uh, or not indices, values, and same with 11. Now, how are we going to do that? Uh, a lot of you guys were on the right track guessing you do need another variable to sort of store that value. But uh, if you were finding the sum, you would initialize it to zero. A lot of you guys were also trying to uh, do the same with this. However, this does not work because we are finding a product, and so when you're multiplying it by zero, it equals zero. So once we get uh, the sum of this, which is zero, one, two, three, which is one and three, which also happens to equal four by coincidence, we want to multiply this by a specific variable. Let's call it product. Let's see if I can spell num. Uh, so it will not lose its value, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, at the end of every uh, loop, we want to multiply it. So 
this you'll get 4 because 1 plus 3 equals 4. This will now equal 4. Now, whatever you get here, you can multiply it by 4. Whatever you get here, you can multiply it by the products that you have. So this will give us the product of the uh, sum of the odd uh, ranges of every single element, which is exactly what we need. So again, you got to initialize that to 1. So, uh, another uh, thing that a lot of you guys caught on but did not know how to do is, uh, well actually some of you guys didn't catch on to this, and uh, let's just do this code without uh, fixing it or talking about it uh, before, uh, so we can sort of fix it together, see what's happening. So, the very first thing we wanted to do was uh, loop through the list given. So, for i in range length uh, number list, oh my gosh, okay, list, there we go. Uh, you would want, now, what do you guys work with? Do you guys think it's i or number list i? Uh, when i specifically was going through this class, the, the, I don't know why for loops were so confusing for me, but something I would always do, uh, especially when starting, is just actually just print out what each of those values were, because right now I want to work with 4, 7, and 11, because that's what my algorithm determines. Now, obviously, you're going to have to call this function in order to see what's happening. I just copy and paste that there. Um, now, you need to pass in a parameter, and we are told that our one parameter is a list of integers. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, it's missing one required uh, positional argument, number list, which is a list of integers, and that goes in between the parentheses. It has to be an actual list. I saw some of you guys doing this. This is invalid syntax because these are just these are just three positional arguments uh, it's because it's within the parentheses if you wrap it in an actual list which are brackets this entire thing is one positional argument and it has one argument here so, which is a list which is exactly what you need now as you can see here let's go back to the first I just clicked first uh, this is where the computer is reading uh, your code if you hit next is you see it went down and it's uh, it saw that the function was being called the computer will not ever go inside here until you call the function so let me show you that again it went from line 18 to line 23 and then as soon as it was called back to line 18 and now it goes in so it was passed through number list as you can see here which at index 0 is 4 index 1 is 7 index 2 is 11 so within the range of number list I'm gonna print I that's odd, it's 0 instead of 4. So that means we need to be working with number list i rather than just i. So now I'm just going to skip to the end. Boom, it's working with all the numbers I want to. Again, this is uh, sort of just to fully grasp what's going on inside a loop. Uh, obviously, I know, I know uh, some of you guys know what's going on there, so it's just a fun little thing to get to know loops better. Now, now that we have loops through our first list, we need to find the range of each element. So we need to use the range function on number list i because that's what these bad boys are. So for j in uh, yeah, range, uh, let's do number list i. What are we going to do? So again, I'm just going to print out uh, j right now, see what j is. J is 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 0 through 10, which is exactly what we need, right guys? Because we want to go from 0 to the element's value, uh, not inclusive, so it won't actually include 4, 7, or 11, it'll be the digit right before it. And yeah, we're working with J. And what exactly are we doing with J? We're going to check if it's odd. And if it's odd, we need to... Uh, we actually have not initialized these guys yet, so I'm going to do that first. Uh, something you guys should do first too, so sum num equals zero, and product num equals one. So, if it is odd, we are going to add it to sum num, so let's do that. So how do we check if something is odd? Uh, a lot of you guys uh, knew how to do this, some of you guys didn't, and that's fine, we're all new here, so we need to check if j, uh, we're going to be using the modulus operator, and we need to check if uh, we have a remainder 
if it's divided by 2. Because if a number modulus 2 gives you 0, that is an even number, and we are working with odd numbers. So the best way to go about this is by saying if, uh, let's see what happens if I say if 2 modulus j equals 0. What happens there? Let's print high. Integer division or modulo by 0. So some of you guys were doing this uh, and, you know, getting this error or your code wasn't compiling, stuff like that. And this is exactly why. Uh, when you guys were programming in your IDE, it would just give you a syntax error and you guys weren't understanding it. But Python Visualizer will actually point out which line it's in and exactly what's happening. Now, this was just a silly error where you are tr uh, trying to modulo by zero. Obviously, the first time j is coming through, you can see it's the side here. j is zero, so you can't divide or modulo by zero. So let's try to fix this, swap these numbers around. So, well, that is that is something right there. So if j modules 2 equals zero, print high. So now we're up to 69 steps. We can just sort of uh, go through there. So up here you can see high has been printed. We want to check where high was printed, see if this is working properly. So high is gone now. I'll click next. Right now I is zero, so we're working with the number four right now. Right now J is zero, so we're working with the number zero right now. So this is checking if zero modulus two equals zero, you want to print high. Uh-oh, it printed. It is not supposed to print at zero. So what could this be? Let's continue and see what happens. So now i is 1, or j is 1. We do want to keep this, but it didn't keep it. Instead, when we get to 2, it prints high again. So it's keeping track of all the even numbers. So a quick fix to this is simply making this if j modules 2 does not equal 0. Now, we've got a whole bunch of highs, but that's that's okay. If we go back to the very first time, you can see j is now equal to 1, it will print high. So now we confirms that we can find all the odd numbers in the range. Now let us do what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do uh, sum num. We're supposed to add it to sum num. So that's sum if I can spell, num plus equals j. So now we have sum num plus equals j. This will be uh, just what we need. It will give us all the odd numbers to store into sum them. So now let us, uh, at the end of this for loop, which is right here, right, what happens uh, on the same line as this for loop happens after this for loop finishes. And what did we want to do? We wanted to take the total sum and multiply it by our products num. So on this indentation level, I will do products num uh, times equals sum num. Alrighty, so that products num should be our final answer, right guys? Let's uh, let's go ahead and return products num so we can see what that looks like. So I believe the answer was 900 for this. If we go last and hit previous, our return value is extremely high. Now, why is this? Let's figure it out. So once you're in your for loop here, uh, let's go to the very end of the for loop where j is equal to 3, which is right before 4. So it should go back to the outer for loop. OK, now i is equal to 1. So now we're with, working with 7. Now, as you guys can see here, sum them is still at 4. So that means all of the numbers in the range of 7 that are odd are going to be added to 4, and it's going to keep adding, keep adding, so we'll have crazy high numbers like we did in our return value here. So what this was a common error uh, in this lab assignment. We need to actually set sum num back equal to 0 right outside our for loop here, like right when we finish this for loop. So once we in here, we are checking the all the odd elements in every index. Once we find the sum of that and we store that sum or multiply it 
by our product variable, we need to set it back equal to zero so we can find the new range of odd sums. And if we go to last, hit previous, we got the correct output. Okay, 